now the knowledge of his power please listen to this one because here is where the administration of your authority and your power the zenith of your dominion is at the mercy of this knowledge the knowledge of his power The last dimension of him that you must press is the knowledge of his power. The knowledge of his character. Helping you to understand who he is. The knowledge of his ways. Helping you to know how to function in the kingdom within the limit and the boundary of his will. Now the knowledge of his power. Please listen to this one. Because here is where the administration of your authority and your power the zenith of your dominion is at the mercy of this knowledge. The knowledge of his power. Psalm 63 and verse 2. Verse 1 says, O oh Lord, give us verse 1. Let's do 1 and 2. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. So he's seeking God. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Why? Verse 2. To see thy power. Not just to see your face. Not just to know your ways. But now to see your power. God's power can be seen and thy glory. So I have seen thee in the sanctuary. You can know his power. Matthew 22 and verse 29. Here's what Jesus said. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. What is the word err? You will walk in error. You will walk in confusion. You will walk in defiance and in deviation to God's preset pattern. When you do not know his ways, like I taught earlier, and you do not know his power, that means the power of God can keep a man in the will of God. In fact, the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things in alignment with the will of God. I have taught you here that outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into the will of God. The power of God only stops working when triggered by faith. It only stops working when that issue, that matter, or that person has come into perfect alignment with the will of God. So when you see a sick person and you release the healing power, the healing anointing, what is the assignment of the healing power? The healing power does not, it doesn't just come there to heal the person. It scans that man's life and sees what aspect of his health is inconsistent with the will of God. And like a drug in your body, it begins to correct depending on the dimension and the gravity of the power released. It can bring you into perfect alignment. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? You want to know God? You have not truly known God as far as it is given to us if you do not know his power. Ephesians 1, 18. Hmm. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever, I love you forever, I love you forever. Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. This Paul was a powerful man. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, watch all the things he wants them to know. That ye may know, number one, what is the hope of his calling. Number two, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Read 19 if you're a Christian, please. Ready? One, to read. What is the third thing he wants us to know? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Let me stretch it to 21, verse 20. That mighty power that was exerted, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, 21, far above principality 
and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but even that which is to come do you know the implication of obeying Paul's prayer or praying that Paul's prayer becomes your prayer let me tell you the truth there is no weakness for the believer who knows the power of God mm -mm. and this is beyond the realm of miracles and signs and wonders there are infinite possibilities that can flow through the life of a believer Paul is saying I see your weakness in terms of your weakness you are not able to be effective witnesses Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the Bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all when it has to do with being a witness it is good to know God's character it is good to know God's ways but in the face of curses and yokes and the arsenals of darkness, the gates of hell that wants to prevail over God's people. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know his power. You need to know his power. It is the revelation of God's power that brings you into unquestionable dominion. 1 Samuel 17, 44 to 47. The story that I started earlier on. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, Goliath now, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Look at the reply of a young boy who had encountered the power of God. Then David said to the Philistine, and ladies and gentlemen, today that Philistine can be anything that speaks to you. It can be sickness, it can be life, it can be limitations. David replied the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. We can spend all night teaching what this name is. The Lord of hosts. The literal Hebrew translation is the captain of the angel army. Some versions will say the 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 captain of the angel army. If you read vers vers versions like um, um, maybe the message or New Living Translation, they will give you greater perspective as to this. It says, beautiful, I come to you message now in the name of God of the angel armies. Do you know what that means? It is an office that every president has. In Nigeria, we call it the grand commander. You see that now? That status that is given a civilian, even if he becomes president. You are in charge of the entire armed forces. And it is only at your final command that war is executed or prohibited. So he said, I come to you in the name. There is something I know about God and his power. That when he gives a command, you are dead. It is in that name I come. Let's finish the scripture. Back to KJV 45. 1 Samuel 17, 45. Now you understand? I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Watch this. Reading 46 now. This day, this gentleman is not just prophesying. He's speaking from the abundance of his revelation about the God who gave him the bear, the God who gave him the lion, that he tore the lion and the bear. If you meet a bear in the forest, run as you pray. Run as you pray. Don't pray alone and stand there. Run as you pray because you most likely may not survive. Those animals are vicious. And worst is a lion. Do you climb a tree to be safe? Do you jump into the river to be safe? Number one, what will even take you there? That's what we must probe. What took you there? Most likely disobedience would have taken you there. Hallelujah. Are we together? This day, the Lord will deliver thee. Who else in the Bible made this kind of bold statement? Bible knowledge. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
those three young boys when they stood before Nebuchadnezzar staring as that idol that 90 feet stature made of gold they said oh king we've been taught to honor but in this matter we will not respect you on that our God is able to deliver us and he will but that even if he does not deliver us for sure bowing down to you mm -mm. yesterday I was tired and I was just resting in the living room um, just for a while and then I saw this children's cartoon and that was super book and it was that story I decided to watch it preparing for this sermon I said thank you Jesus and you see the children's cartoon you you I mean you needed to see what the power of God did in that cartoon rubbish that furnace for nothing and the, the fourth man who was in that fire said oh thou fourth man please stand with me oh tomorrow as I teach hallelujah amen let's finish that scripture we're reading to 47 I hope you are learning it says, I will give, he's prophesying to Goliath now. I will smite thee and take your head from you. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Not just that there is a mighty young boy who is standing to face a giant. It says, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, but the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. There are many mountains and many battles you will confront in your life as a believer. Many of you are standing before them now. Financial battles, marital battles,